Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and this is the third part in a series on solutions for our data cleansing challenge. So in a prior video, I presented this challenge, which was to convert this column, the text in column C here, into time values. And the ending result is here in column D. Now, if you wanna take on this challenge, check out that previous video. I'll also put a link to this file in the description below this video so you can uh, download it and follow along. So in this video, we're going to look at a solution with Power Query and a few different options there with Power Query. So there was a lot of great uh, results or great solutions posted on both the YouTube video and the blog post with Power Query. And the one we're going to look at, if we jump back to the uh, back of this file here in the Power Query section, was a solution that came in from Walt. This was a great solution, very elegant and simple, and I'm going to walk through how he did it. So let's go ahead and jump into the uh, query editor here. And uh, we'll first just take a quick look at Walt's query, and then we'll walk through how to recreate it. So here's uh, Walt's query. And again, he just used uh, a few different transformations here that we're going to look at with the extract under the extract menu to get the hours, the minutes, and the seconds uh, here in separate columns. And then he uh, eventually just merged all those together to create this time value and then convert it to a duration. So I'll go ahead and uh, close this and we'll recreate the query. Uh, and I have it here on the original data tab. I just have a table with our original data. And so the first thing we'll do is go to the data tab from table. If you're using an older version of Excel, you'll go to the Power Query tab and choose from table or range. That of course will bring up uh, a new query in the query editor with a preview of our data here. And then we can begin our transformations. So the first thing Walt did was uh, select the time column here. And now he did do a few transformations. I'll go to the transform tab. Uh, a few transformations to just do some cleanup work here. If you're not totally familiar with the data, he converted the time to all lowercase. Uh, that will just help when we do the split. Uh, in this case, they were all lowercase, so this is not really a necessary step, but it's great to just see that he do a little cleanup work just in case. He also did on the format tab here a trim, just to trim any blank spaces that might be at the beginning or the end of these values. So we'll do those here. Again, not required for this data set, but you never know, especially with thousands of rows of data, you might just wanna do those quick cleanups to begin with. So next we're going to split the time column into hours, minutes, and seconds. We're actually going to add columns for each of those time increments. So we'll go up here to uh, first, I'm sorry, first select the time column, then go to the add column tab. And on the extract menu here, we're going to choose a text before delimiter. And we're going to do this for the hour increment. So for hours, we're going to choose text before delimiter. And that will open up this window here. Now our delimiter is going to be the word hour. And we're going to put a space in front of that since we do have a space between the number and the word hour or hours. But since we have both singular and plural, we'll just use this singular, which is hour. That will also cover the plural because of the way this uh, delimiter works. And then under advanced here, we're going to uh, click this little drop down here and choose in this drop down from the end of the input. And what this is going to do is it's going to scan backwards or from right to left. So it's going to look for this delimiter here, which is hour with a space in front of it. And it's going to do that from the end of the text and then go forwards or go to the left here until it finds it. And then it's just going to return the text before the delimiter, just as it says here. And the reason we choose that is because there are cells that do not have hour in them. For example, in the row two here, there's no hour in here. So if it goes and looks left, uh, I'm sorry, right to left, it doesn't find anything, then it's just going to return a blank. If we, if we chose this from the start of the input instead, uh, then it would actually return 25 seconds, and that's not what we want. So keep it this from the end of the input, a little trick there and then we'll go ahead and hit OK, and that will add a new column with just the hours only. Now, we could rename this column now. I'm going to do that in a separate step. One thing you'll notice that Walt did was he actually renamed this in the formula. So he went up here in the formula bar. This is the name of the column here, text before delimiter, and he actually changed the name right here instead of creating a separate step to change the column name. 
Now that method is just kind of a personal preference there. I'm going to actually change the column names as a separate step so we can see that in the steps over here so it's not too confusing, uh, but you can do that trick as well. Just change the column name right here within the step. So next we're going to add the minutes or extract the minutes from our time column. So again, select the time column, we'll go to add column and then extract. And this time we're going to choose text between delimiters, the last choice right here, text between delimiters. And that'll bring up this text between delimiters window. You'll notice we have an extra option here for an end delimiter. So since we're doing minutes, we're first gonna start with our start delimiter, which again starts with a space. And then you can type the full word minute or just MIN uh, abbreviation, because as soon as it finds anything starting MIN, uh, that's when it'll do the split. I'll just put minute there for this one. And then for our end delimiter, we're going to use a space or type a space right here. And then of course, under advanced options, we do need to change some of these. So again, click the drop down for advanced options. And for this first one, scanning for the start delimiter, again, we're gonna choose from the end here. So that's going to scan right to left from the end, looking for the word minute. Uh, number of start delimiters to skip is gonna be zero. We don't wanna skip anything here. That's if we had duplicate uh, delimiters. And then for this option, we're going to choose uh, from the start of delim the delimiter towards the start of the input. Or I should say from the start delimiter. So it's gonna start from the start delimiter, the first delimiter, and go again towards the start of the input. So again, right to left. So we'll choose that. And I'll do my best to explain this here. So if I move this down here, again, we're looking for minute here in this text and we're going right to left. So we're going right to left here or we're looking for space minute. So once it finds that, the what's going to be left is 10 hours 39. And then the end delimiter is actually going to be that space. We have a space there. So what this is going to do is look for the space before the 39. So it's going to uh, go from the start delimiter, which is this delimiter here, minute, again there, and it's going to go toward the start of the input. So it's toward the start of the text, right to left. Uh, so again, that's going to look, then start looking for a space before 39, somewhere before 39. When it finds the first one, it'll stop and then split this column. So what we're going to get is just that 39. And in cases where the uh, text starts with minutes, it's not going to find a space before that. So it's just going to leave us with the 59 there and nothing after it. So pretty cool stuff here, pretty tricky stuff. We'll go ahead and uh, hit OK, and we'll see we get our minutes here in the second column. And then the process for seconds is the exact same as that one, exact same as minutes. So again, we'll select the time column. It's not already selected. Extract, text between delimiters. And then here for our start delimiter, again, we can do space and then second, uh, or even just SEC would be fine. And here we'll uh, put a space for our end delimiter, jump down or drop down the advanced options. We're going to do from the end of input and then uh, from the start toward the start, just like that. We'll go ahead and hit OK, and that will add a column with our seconds. So now we have those time periods split up. I'm going to quickly rename the columns. This step actually isn't necessary uh, because we're going to merge all of these columns into one in the next step. Uh, but if you are stepping through this and want to review it later on, you might want to just see this. So we'll just quickly change uh, each of these column headers. And then next, we also need to replace any blanks with zeros here because we're going to merge all of these columns together uh, using and, and then convert it to a time uh, value. So anything where we have a blank, we want to add a zero there. So we're just going to select these three columns, hold down the shift key, uh, select the first, hold down the shift key, select the last. And then in the transform tab, we'll choose replace values. That'll bring up the replace values window. We're going to leave this blank because we want to find blanks and we'll replace that with a zero. So just type a zero right there and hit OK. So now we have zeros in place of all of our blanks. And the next step will be to merge these columns. So again, uh, select the columns if you don't already have them selected. And we're going to, again, on the Transform tab, go over to Merge Columns. And the Merge Columns window allows us to specify a separator. So in this dropdown, we're going to choose colon. And the new column name, instead of merged, we'll call this time value. And then we can go ahead and hit OK. 
and that's going to merge all of those columns together and give us this time value column. So all of those numbers are now going to be separated by the colon character. So this looks more like a time value. However, it still is a text value. Uh, you can see that right here with the data type in the column, it's still a text value. So the next step will just be to change the data type. A quick way to do that is just right click on the column here, change type, and uh, you can either choose a time or Power Query also has an option for a duration, which is probably more what we want because these are not really times, they're actually durations. Remember from the challenge that these are the number of hours or the, I should say the amount of time that a employee has spent in the training system. So we'll just choose duration here and that will convert this uh, time value into the duration. And then the final step is to just close and load this. So this is now ready, home tab, close and load. And that of course will create a new sheet in our workbook with the output. So here we have our new time value column right here. Now, if we look at this, if we jump into the format cells, you might not have seen this format before. This is actually this uh, zero here at the front is days. So if we right click here, oops, you're not gonna be able to see that. Let me try that again. Right click uh, format cells. We can see in the format cells window, we have this custom number format here, uh, days, hours, minutes, seconds. And since we don't have anything over 24 hours, you can actually just change this to hours, minutes, seconds. So we can use this custom format here, or in the cases where we didn't have hours, you could use this one. This is optional uh, hours there. Let's go ahead and choose that one. And then, oh, we need to do that for the entire column. So uh, control space to select the entire column, right click format cells, Again, we'll go up here to our custom number format, jump down here, here's hours, minutes, seconds, hit okay. And so now everything is in that time value uh, format. Now, one great question that came up is what if we have over 24 hours, a time that's over 24 hours? In this particular data set, we do not. Uh, however, if that happens, these, this query would return an error. And I'll just show an example of that. So here, let's change this. Instead of uh, 10 hours, let's just make it 40 hours. So something that's over 24 hours or over an entire day. So we have that there. Let's go back over to our uh, new sheet here. We'll just right click refresh. And we can see now that uh, we get a blank here and we can also see in the query and connections pane that we have one error. And this error value uh, right up here is being returned. And that's because this is over 24 hours. And even though uh, we change the data type to a duration, it's the same as the data type being a time. Uh, Power Query or Excel can't handle anything over 24 hours in that hour uh, increment or that hour section of the time value. So I do have a workaround for this or an alternate solution. And I have it in this query here, time uh, text to time over 24 hours. So I'll go ahead and open that one up. And for this, I really use the same uh, beginning process that Walt used. So here we're still going to get the hours, uh, minutes, and seconds, replace those with blanks. However, uh, I've added a few additional steps. Uh, first here is to change the type to a number. So we have all these as numbers. And then I did a calculation to calculate the total number of seconds per day. And that's here. So for this, I uh, went to the add column and added a custom column. And then I'll just bring that up right here. If we click the gear icon, we can actually see this one. So here's the custom column, which I uh, called time in days. And here I just did the math for each of those columns to convert the time increment into seconds and then divide that by the total number of seconds in a day. So I took hours, multiplied that by the number of minutes in an hour, number of seconds in a minute. So uh, 60 times 60, which is 3,600. Same with minutes times uh, 60 seconds here and then added our seconds. So this would give us, uh, this portion would give us the total number, oops, I'm sorry, I can't select that there, but that's the total number of seconds. And then we divide that by the total number of seconds per day, which is 24 times 60 times 60 or 86,400. And you can put those totals in your formula. I just put these here so you could see where I got those numbers from and how we calculated those. But that then gives us a fraction or a decimal number. That returns the decimal number here, which is again the decimal number of the number of seconds within a day. 
and we can see that the majority of these numbers are less than one. However, this first one here, where we change the number of hours over 24, it's 40 hours, we can see that 1.694, that tells us that this is more than one day, or this is one full day plus uh, 0.694, uh, that percentage of a day, or that fraction of a total day. And then again, I changed uh, the data type to a uh, duration here, and that's what we see here. So we have the number of days, dot, 16 hours, 39 minutes, 40 seconds. And then when we uh, close and load that, uh, there we go, here's our uh, output here. And again, uh, oops, let's refresh that. Didn't, looks like it didn't refresh, there we go. So now we have uh, one day, 16 hours, 39 minutes, 40 seconds. And I forgot to remove our time period columns. Of course, you could also do that in the query. If you don't need to see those on the output sheet, let's jump back into the query here quickly, select uh, these columns, right click, remove columns, and then we'll just have uh, the original data and the time and days. So go ahead and close and load that. That should refresh our query, there it goes. And uh, now we have just that column there, those other time period columns removed. So that's one way to do this conversion in Power Query. Definitely a little bit more setup work involved there. But again, the nice part is if you're refreshing this every week or even every day with new data, uh, all you have to do is uh, link up to wherever that data is, whether it's a database or a CSV file, and then refresh your query and you'll be good to go. So you only have to do that setup work once. I also included another uh, query here from Renato with a different uh, technique for splitting the columns. I'll let you check that one out. I won't go through that one step by step, uh, but another good solution there if you weren't familiar with some of those merge, uh, I'm sorry, those extract features uh, that Walt used. Uh, Renato has another uh, query here that goes into some other techniques. So definitely check that one out too. So I hope that helps. Thanks again to everyone that contributed a Power Query solution. Awesome to see all of these different techniques we can use with features in Power Query. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.